My name is Daniel Beasley from the Translational Imaging Group at University College London. I work a lot with Dave Cash at the Dementia Research Centre um, on projects with them. But for my main project that I'm funded by, uh, which is what I'm going to talk about today, is um, a big data project with um, lots of uh, clinical data. It's the BRC Imaging Initiative at the... Uh, Big. There's a, like a server and a cluster and an adapted broom cupboard in the National Hospital for Neurology and Neurosurgery. Um, and we're using XNAT to catalogue and audit all the data from all the UCLH hospitals. It's all clinical data, it's all retrospective, it's a big mixture of every kind of imaging data. Um, at the moment, we've got well in excess of 100,000 sessions. I'm hoping when I get back next week there'll be around 160,000 sessions if it's still functioning. Um, so we have primarily MR, but we also have plenty of other stuff, CT, PET MR. And we're also collecting as much non-imaging data as possible. So we have radiology reads, letters, and everything else we can get hold of, really. Um, so our infrastructure, Windows, uh, which is a wonderful experience. It wasn't my choice. It was already there when I started. And if there's one thing I've, I've learned, it's uh, not to use Windows. There's, uh, if you want to know why, there's a, there's a couple of issues that have been real challenges in terms of uh, metafile memory use and uh, path lengths. Um, and we have around 100, well, we have 180 terabytes of storage, which I don't know, probably used 100 terabytes so far. Um, actually using ISS for some reason. Um, I've made some modifications to XNAT to adapt it slightly. Uh, and it's attached to a cluster for some processing. Um, yeah, it's pretty good. Um, okay, so this is all retrospective uh, data, new data that's being generated, but, um, and it's quite messy. There's around 14 different types of scanners, uh, mixed modalities, and I've discovered there's lots of these little, little files within the, the folders, along with the sort of standard DICONs and snapshots and lots of other things which confuse XNET somewhat. There's plenty of non-brain vascular and scouts but not necessarily of interest. And some of the DICOM headers, uh, they're a bit messy here, there and everywhere. So trying to deal with all this data in a nice cohesive way and get it organized in XNET um, could be a challenge. Um, so, during the night, we, we raid packs. We have this sort of gateway computer that uh, tries to uh, harvest as much as possible from the pack system and from other systems. And then, actually, this, this, um, uh, the actual XNAT is not actually connected to the network at the moment. It's, it's, um, it's certainly behind the firewall, the, the hospital firewall, but we generally don't connect it to the network. Uh, so sort of just the way it is. Um, so we have this gateway computer, and then we dump what we've harvested onto the onto the XNet server, and then um, I've run a script which basically makes a copy and zips the sessions that we've made, harvested, and then it reads. It goes through finding DICOM files, reading the DICOM headers, and then it generates. It creates session labels and subject labels. Uh, and then it creates the folders in the pre-archive and moving files to the, the correct pre-archive folders and then writes an SQL command, which makes XNet aware of the file's existence in the pre-archive. And th th there's uh, something on the XNet wi wiki that explains how this is done. Another point about this is that it's all going into one project because how do you, you know, split it up. At the moment, it's just one project, anyhow. Um, now, on running on the nodes, there's 
uh, the, I, I disabled the auto run pipeline. There's not really much ne necessity for it. It's certainly you know, shadow X net, as it were. Um, for the so once it's imported, there's like tasks running on the nodes that check for for new sessions that have been archived. So it goes into pre-archive and automatically gets archived from there. Um, so one thing that we have is a scan type identification to try and determine what type of scan it is, whether it's vascular, whether it's non-brain, or, or, or whatever, you know, if it's of interest. Um, and the, after that, the, we try to ex extract the scan parameters, uh, because there's lots of little files that can confuse XNAT, and sometimes XNAT cannot determine what the scan parameters are. So we have to be a bit more thorough and then write this to the database. Um, and also stuff like it's getting as much stuff from the DICOM header as possible. For example, basically turning everything from the group 10 in the DICOM header into a demographics data type. For example, I don't know, military rank is there, I think. And also DICOM to Nifty. We have some uh, wonderful uh, in-house DICOM to Nifty software that uh, uh, works great for all the scanners and solve the problems. It works wonderfully on, on Linux, um, not on Windows, but we're, we're working on that. Um, uh, but we have like a, for the DICOM to Nifty, there's like a hierarchy. Because the data is very unexpected, it needs to be future-proof. We're just trying every kind of software. So starting at first the in-house software and then every other software to try and ensure that the, uh, the DICOM is converted. One thing which we found of interest was um, because there's sometimes multiple different types of files in a, in a, in a uh, scan, trying to get the BVEC and BVAL values is a, a, a real problem using DICOM to Nifty X and correlating them to the correct file. Um, what also the thing about the DICOM to Nifty is that the, the output is direct into the archive folder and then the rest uh, cool, done. Um, but that's all well and good. So we have this. Uh, we only have 180 terabytes of storage, though, so that will run out at some point. Um, we're on, running on Windows. Not particularly happy about that. And to be honest, the server's not powerful enough, and we really need to improve that. So now we, we, we're planning. We've got money to invest on new equipment and really trying to redesign it um, and make it future-proof. Uh, because we're, we're really expanding beyond UCLH um, onto very large, much larger numbers of sessions. Um, so we're getting uh, more equipment uh, for better processing, etc. Um, and I've been playing with XNAT to see if we can you know, improve it to make it more suitable for very large numbers. Uh, one thing I tried testing, and if anyone's ever had any experience with this with Hadoop, uh, I tried uh, making it work with uh, um, XNAT. It doesn't work, HDFS. But because there's some sort of native commands to do with HDFS, it doesn't like editing files or something. I don't, so if anyone's got any experience with that, it's something that we're, we're going to try and uh, fix or look into. Um, uh, new data methods for importing to try and make it faster if there's, there's lots of, we need more powerful equipment and some modifications to XNAT to make it more uh, workable with very large numbers for example recent activity for example here's um, an XNAT that has almost 12, 12 million sessions. Uh, definitely big data. Uh, it, uh, I did this, uh, I wrote a script that created the file archive and the SQL. Um, 
Uh, actually, it was faster putting VSQL and C batches of CSV files and uploading them into the Postgres database direct. But obviously, there's some things in the user interface that don't work well when you've got very large numbers. So I've sort of removed things like that. Wherever you do, do not delete a project. If you click on delete project, it will just, you know. I would recommend you just don't let your users touch. Basically, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Basically, and, and also, also when when it's reached 12 million, I think I've I think I've broken it anyway. Uh, you, it sort of starts and gets here, but the SQL commands, uh, the, it just hangs for a long time when trying to get the MR sessions or anything like that. But it's good, you know. I'm trying to push it to the edge and see how I can break it. And I'm, this is what we're working on, trying to find sort of solutions to try and adapt it for very large numbers which is our plan to try and achieve this sort of level. Um, and yeah, let's, let's see if we can uh, achieve this. I hope we can, and it would be great. And yeah, that's it, thank you. <laughs>